Yes, it appears that all the committee members are present. Great, 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 great. Uh, we have sent you the minutes of the last meeting on the 15th of April, and we need to have an approval of those minutes if you've had a chance to peruse them. I'd entertain a motion. I move we accept the minutes of the last meeting. Rich. Yeah. The motion is that. It's been moved and seconded. Any further discussion? Uh, Ron, this is Karen. Yes, um, Karen. I you know that on that first meeting, I think there was a spot where we were supposed to declare our conflicts of interest. And I think we may have skipped over it too quickly. I would like to have that spot on today's agenda, maybe after public comments, so that those of us that do have conflicts can declare. If there's not a problem with anybody else, that sounds great, Karen. Anybody else have a comment? All right. Is there anybody from the public on this Zoom meeting that would like to make a comment at this time? Okay, hearing none. We'll move on to uh, the presentation of the budget message. Ron, which, uh, Ron, did yeah. we need to vote on those minutes? Oh God, I forgot about that. Sorry. Yeah. <laughs> Thanks, Mike. Been a while. Been a while. Been a while. Sorry. <laughs> okay. So we have yeah we have a motion. It's been accepted. Uh, and and uh, all those in favor, signify by saying aye. 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 Any, anybody opposed? The same. That motion passes. Then we'll go to number four, which is presentation of the budget message from Jeff. Ron, Jeff? this yes. is Karen. If I may, yeah. can we do the conflict of interest part now before we dive into the budget message? Okay, sounds Sorry. good. Okay, I'll go first since I'm the squeaky wheel here. Okay, I squeaky. I declare a conflict of interest. I receive um, wages from the county and I also own a private business that does business with the county government. Thank you. Very good. Anybody else? This is last. I have a conflict of interest in that I draw wages as well, and I manage a special district that uh, does business with the county. Thank you, Les. Uh, this is Arthur, and I have a conflict of interest in that I draw wages from the county, uh, but I do not have a business that does any business with the county. Thank you, Arthur. Uh, this is Bob Benton. I have a conflict of interest as I also uh, receive wages from the county. And uh, my family has a, owns a building that stores county artifacts for the museum uh, and, and, is co and <clears throat> we're compensated for doing that. Thank you, Bob. This is Mike. Uh, I am de declaring a conflict of interest in that I get a salary from the county as well. My Business operation does not do business with the county. Thank you. Thank you, Mike. Uh, thank all of you. And thank you, Karen, for bringing that to our attention. Uh, I, I forgot that that was something we always did on an annual basis. Now, we'll go back to where I was going to go. Uh, with the presentation of the budget message from Jeff. Jeff warned me that it, it is going to be fairly lengthy, but maybe not as lengthy as uh, your prior year. Jeff, are you there? Yes, I am. Can uh, Hopefully everybody can hear me okay. Uh, as uh, Chair Rivers indicated, this might take a little bit of time, but last year it was uh, really long, and hopefully it's not quite as long. I would like to start the message this year by talking a little bit about uh, the approach to budget preparation uh, for this upcoming year. It was a very challenging year to do a budget for a variety of reasons. Having said that, I would much rather be facing the challenges the county is facing this year than those we were facing a year ago. Um, the county is in a much better position this year than it was a year ago at, at this time. Um, one of the primary reasons for that is passage of the five-year local option levy, which is uh, fully levied within the proposed budget. Um, the other thing that I would mention is we were at the beginning of the pandemic and we 
knew that we would have a number of unanticipated expenses, and I'm pleased to say that we also got a bunch of unanticipated revenue as well. Um, the county is fortunate to have received that unanticipated revenue. Um, that support, at least from my uh, professional experience for local government, is unprecedented. I have never seen uh, the kind of support the county has received in some 38 years of doing this kind of work. So it is very significant and very much appreciated. The last thing that I would say has really been a challenge is um, a pandemic, um, a lot of unanticipated revenue and expenses, so a lot of things that don't necessarily track historically. But then layer on top of that a major software conversion uh, that we are going through where we've identified uh, a number of issues as it relates to our current accounting or our old accounting system and trying to address and fix those as we move through time and deal with a pandemic and a bunch of unanticipated revenues and expenditures. So it, it's been a challenging year. Um, I think it's important, though, to recognize um, some of those challenges are good, and those challenges are brought forth in that we now have some guidance and direction that's been established by the Board of Commissioners and by the Budget Committee to create some bookends for us um, in terms of meeting challenges as we move forward now and then through time. And I want to spend a little bit of time talking about those two specific things, because from my perspective, they're incredibly meaningful and incredibly helpful in terms of providing guidance and direction as we move through time. So the Budget Committee uh, and members of the Board of Commissioners are aware of this, but I'm going to go through it anyway, and that is there was a budget committee meeting where there was guidance provided in terms of what the county should be looking at in terms of contingency, reserves, capital planning, and sustainability. And I put those in the budget message, but I'm going to go through them. The targeted contingency is 5%. Reserves should be no more than 15, uh, preferably somewhere in the range of 10 to 15%. Um, the county should be working on a capital plan that incorporates facilities, not just equipment. Um, that is incorporated into the budget document. Having said that, it, it is a work in progress. Um, budgets should be sustainable, which to me, um, based on the discussion that I heard, means the ability to provide a consistent level of service over time where expenses are kept at the same level as incoming revenue. Um, and then finally, uh, the timber deposit interest fund, which was historically used or at least as near as I can tell, historically used to provide um, operating funds to the general fund will now be used for capital purposes and ideally be used for acquisition of additional forest land. So those are, those are the guidelines that were provided by the Budget Committee. Uh, those are extremely helpful to staff as we prepare a budget. The next thing that was extremely helpful to staff as we prepared the budget this year was the Board of Commissioners five-year strategic plan and the goals contained therein. Um, I'm going to just, I, I'm not going to go through all of those, but I want to read the first four goals because those are some of the things that we primarily focused on as we reviewed and considered this year's budget. I'm not going to go through all the the action items that would, that would take too long, but I do want to read the goals. So, Number one is modernize the county organization, internal systems, and align services with community needs. Number two, foster financial stability and strength. Three, enhance communication and engagement efforts internally and externally. And four, increase housing diversity and affordability. So as we looked at the budget, not just for those four things, but the others as well, um, we tried to direct any funding towards those goals as those are um, strategic goals for the county to move forward. The other thing that was taken into consideration was the basis that was used to define the asks for the first two tax measures 
as those were the needs identified by county staff in terms of what they needed to have effectively provide service within the county, not new services, existing services. And so those were considered as well. So in looking at the budget, we looked at all those things. The difficulty that we faced in looking at all that is that 2021 and 21-22, and probably the two years after that, are really not like the years that preceded them, nor will they likely be like the years that come after them, although we don't know that. Um, and the reason why is because of that unprecedented support that the county has received. But that's sort of the stuff that we looked at as we considered the budget coming into uh, this next year. Um, so with that, I want to talk a minute about um, some of the overall cost increases in the budget, and those are in the budget message. Uh, PERS has gone up, uh, no, no surprise uh, there necessarily, but I would comment that the PERS increases, uh, 1.43 for general employees and 1.16 for public safety employees, are actually less than what we incorporated into the budget. Um, we used uh, older estimates that we got from the state and these newer estimates that are in the budget message are actually lower than the ones that we used when we prepared the budget. We did not have enough time to go back and change those numbers. So that will actually benefit the cash position of all funds that contain personnel as you move into the future. I would also say that the numbers changed, I believe, as a result of legislation that was approved and then uh, those changes were litigated in terms of um, the level of cost or benefit or however you want to say it received by employees. So um, the legislature did take some action to reduce the cost to employers for PERS and these lower rate increases reflect that, um, which is good news. Secondly, I want to talk about health insurance premiums. A few years ago, the county decided to get out of the private insurance market and go into a, a pooled arrangement, and the county did so. And when we did that, we knew that for a period of three years that we would pay a higher premium until we had experience established. We now have established experience. Our experience is good. And our insurance premiums, and I wish this could happen more often, our insurance premiums actually are going to be going down by roughly 10%, um, which is, you know, a big deal. And, again, I wish that could happen more often, but the reality is, is this is a one-time thing. But we'll, we will take it, and we're, we're thankful to get that. Um, lastly, and these are, this is an estimate, but the cost of living adjustments included in the budget are set at 3%. Uh, for those funds where there are employees involved. I would comment that the personal services worksheets that were done, again, like the whole budget this year, had to be done manually. The personal services worksheets are done manually. Um, refining those numbers is a work in progress, and so we continue to find things that need to be corrected as we move through time. So as you look at budget to budget, there may be some anomalies and we compared, when we did it, those analysis, we compared actuals to budget to try to ferret out where we needed to make corrections. But you might see some, um, some things within the budget that are look out of whack, and hopefully when you look at the actuals, uh, that, that, would be not, that would not be the case. Um, looking at the, uh, the budget itself, um, I listed in the budget message some of the changes that have been proposed. But before I jump into those, a few of those changes, I'm not going to go through the whole list. I really want to talk to the budget committee about the thought process that was used in terms of why these things. And I mentioned some of those in terms of setting the stage for uh, what's included in the budget, uh, specifically the request from the 2019 
tax measures. But I also want to talk about um, why, why this. So taking that list, what was attempted to be done is to basically what I'll call put in less expensive um, staffing increases and do a mixture of low, lower cost staffing increases with contracts for services so that we could manage our costs better over time um, and still then use what resources potentially are available and spread those out across the organization. I didn't necessarily um, favor any one area. I tried to spread a little bit of benefit throughout the organization as opposed to just one place. Having said that, not all funds and not all operations derive um, benefit from the same revenue sources. The other thing I would say is uh, the public safety piece of this um, is identified within the measure and what's been included in the budget for this year is consistent with what was included in the five-year public safety local option levy. So with that, I want to just talk briefly about some of the items that are included in the budget. Uh, one of the action items that was expressed by the board and their goals was to take a look at compensation for county employees to ensure that uh, we're as competitive as we can be compared to our uh, comparator counties, and there's money in there to do that study. The next thing I want to mention is this is a contract for services or contracts for service and community development to look at, the, uh, in particular, the Parkdale Urban Unincorporated Area uh, to look at basically putting one of those into place for Parkdale. Odell is a little bit more of an issue because of the state rules affecting that area. Um, and then also within that chunk of money, the county is required to put into place the National Scenic Area Amendments, and so some of that money is for that purpose. Um, as I mentioned, there are items in the proposed budget consistent with the five-year public safety levy that includes uh, an additional um, it's actually a sergeant, not a deputy, but it's a, a sergeant. And uh, court security are included with, within the budget, um, as has been planned. Uh, I wanted to mention, though this isn't the general fund, there are funds appropriated in um, the Timber Land Fund to look at and hopefully put into place a, a I'm not sure the best way to say it is a carbon credit program whereby the county will get additional revenue for doing nothing more than what we're doing today in terms of the way the county manages the forest. Um, everybody, I think, is well aware the county manages it for its forest on a longer rotation, which is somewhat uncommon, if not very uncommon, and that has value in the carbon credit market and potentially could net the county millions of dollars. And the thought process in putting it in the timber land fund is those proceeds would then be used to acquire additional forest land. Um, so it did not come out of the general fund. The additional revenue would then go back into um, forest land acquisition. And probably of the long list, the, the thing that I want to talk about is uh, the $4.5 million that is incorporated into the budget that the county is aware that it will receive, that is ARPA money. Um, that money has not been, um, the use of that money has not been identified yet. Um, what staff did uh, to create flexibility in particular for the Board of Commissioners as they decide how that money will be allocated is we recognized it on the revenue side and we just put an entire lump sum on the expenditure side. So when it comes time to decide how that money gets used, instead of having to do a, a supplemental budget and have a hearing, all you have to do is move money potentially amongst accounts. And it's a far easier process for staff to be able to do that. You can still have a public hearing or if you are so inclined, but you don't have to go through the um, 
the designated state process to make those changes. So it's, again, it's recognized on the revenue side, it's expensed on the expense side, but it's undesignated in terms of how it's expensed. It's shown literally in one lump sum, in one line item in the general fund. The other thing I want to mention is the county knows that in 2022 and in 2023, it will be getting additional public lands funds that are coming through the ARPA, um, the ARPA Act. We don't know how much, we know the years. Obviously that doesn't affect uh, fiscal year 21, 22, but will affect years after that. And it will provide additional funding for what I would imagine would be contracts or one-time expenditures potentially as, as they're not a permanent revenue stream, or at least we don't know that they are at this particular point in time. I had mentioned in the budget message that staff was working on the financial projections. Uh, those were finished the week before last. They were revised last week and I believe they're now in a form that's shareable with the budget committee. And so I'm prepared to do that now and I'm gonna spend a few minutes just going through those financial projections. As we look at this, I think the way that we approached this in terms of laying the budget out, not knowing how the forecast really reflected until we, you know, we did the work, is that Looking at sustainability, given all of what is in flux right now on both the revenue and expenditure side, you're really going to have to look at and adjust potentially the budget as you would in any year, but particularly these years as you move through time. So you really have to keep an eye on sustainability year after year because you're going to have a bunch of revenue coming in here. Um, some of it, you know, you know you're going to get. Some of it, you don't know you're going to get. And there are revenue sources that we anticipate uh, we'll be getting beyond those that I mentioned. I'll talk about those a little bit in terms of the forecast when I get here in a second. So some things were added. Not everything was added. Um, it was a combination of expenditure types. And the thought was to... Um, make improvements to modernize the county in an incremental way so that you aren't adding a bunch of cost immediately so that you have an easier time reassessing as you move through time. So, you know, there's not a huge amount of additions here, but there's some. Um, and hopefully those additions are meaningful in terms of uh, meeting the commissioner's goals contained in the strategic plan. Uh, so with that, I am going to jump into the, the financial forecast here a minute. Um, it, it won't take very long, but I think it's important that that be shared with everybody. Um, so if I have done this correctly, I will be able to share my screen and you will be able to see this. All right, I'm going to blow this up because it's actually hard for me to see. Um, it could be the focus. Hopefully everyone can see that okay. So the commissioners may, uh, may remember this format. These, this was the format, and it's actually the same exact model, albeit obviously updated, that was used to do the forecasting and the projections for the five-year public safety local option levy. And basically what this model is, is it's a cash flow model specifically for the general fund. And it basically is a model that forecasts at the line item level for every single revenue and expenditure account within the general fund. So there's a fair amount of detail behind this. Every single expense in every, or every single line item in every single year can be manipulated to reflect whatever it is you want to add or subtract in any given year during the forecast. 
And what I would talk about here, um, and some of this, you know, is mentioned a little bit in the budget message, but I'm going to consolidate some of the remarks in, um, in this forecast. And you'll see that, and I may have to move this down a little bit because I blew it up too much. Um, but I want to talk a little bit about some of the assumptions before I get into the numbers, because the numbers piece of this will actually go pretty quick. In terms of the revenue expenditures, or excuse me, the revenue um, assumptions and the revenue forecast, there are really two major individual revenue sources for the county. One of those is property tax and the other one is timber. And, you know, roughly speaking, those are somewhere around 60% or so of, of, the, of the general fund. That actually may have changed given that the county uh, now is in the financial position to actually have uh, a healthy fund balance, which is really important. Um, but right now, timber revenue is really high. And actually, for 2021, timber revenue is above what we actually forecasted last year. What was done with timber revenue moving into the future is we just left it flat. I would not be surprised if during this five-year period that timber revenue, because of what's going on with log prices um, right now, is that in the, the way the county's formula works, I would not be surprised if there's an increase again next year, but then after that I also wouldn't be surprised if somewhere in the next three years the number may actually go down because I don't think uh, log prices can continue at this level indefinitely. Uh, I could be wrong, but um, I also could be right. So for purposes of this projection, uh, those numbers were left flat. I indicated what we had done within the current year budget with the ARPA money. Um, the commissioners are aware that those funds can be used to basically replace lost revenue due to COVID. And while the county knows that it has revenues that were impacted due to COVID, we made no assumptions about any revenue replacement in terms of those ARPA funds in this forecast. So reasonably, you could expect the revenue position, albeit one-time revenue during the period, the five-year period, you could expect that uh, these numbers are conservative if the board chooses to use some of that money for revenue replacement. Um, property taxes, we actually trended down ever so slightly compared to what was used in the forecast last year. Um, and that just is a reflection of a little bit of uncertainty over what will happen with commercial values in the short term. I think in the long term, commercial values will be unaffected, but there may be a little bit of a blip in the short term. Having said that, if there is, those are directly attributable to COVID, and should the county choose to use the ARPA money uh, for revenue replacement, it, it may be possible to replace that lost property tax. Um, we don't know what the numbers are, so in 22 and 23, we assumed uh, no additional public lands funding. Those are the PILT dollars that the county gets um, from the federal government. That's payment in lieu of taxes. Um, other sources of revenue within the model uh, were trended from zero to 3%. Um, typically, what's done is you look at revenue sources that are tied to fees per service, and typically those would trend up at a level comparative to what wage increases are going up. So if we assume 3% in terms of cost of living in the model, which we did, you'll see a number of the fee revenue lines that would be trended up in a similar way. Um, where we don't tend to trend up numbers is when they're really small and they're not necessarily tied to um, personnel costs. Um, they generally tend to be pretty small. The other thing I wanted to bring up, which I think is worth noting in terms of the conservative forecast on the revenue side, is a few things, and these are mentioned in the budget message, uh, campground proceeds, 
We know that Kingsley will uh, likely open up in uh, 2022 um, at the end of the fiscal year. Um, and going forward, the county will have additional revenue and additional expense, but we anticipate that our revenue will be greater than our expense, and the county will actually derive uh, revenue from Kingsley. Um, how much that is, we, in this model, we made a, a, an estimate. It is really conservative. And then the other thing I would mention is it relates to campground um, proceeds is the Board of Commissioners are aware that the county acquired an additional piece of property with expansion of the Tucker Park campground into that area. Uh, while th there's not funds in the 21-22 budget for that work, um, there is money planned in the following year uh, to do some planning and design work and then look at construction uh, in later years. The good news about the construction side of that is there are grant funds readily available to pay for actually um, design and, and construction. So no money was necessarily included for the construction or design piece of that, but we didn't incorporate any additional revenue in the campground line at all. And uh, I think later in the model, in the later years, it's entirely possible if the county moves, moves forward that you would see additional revenue in excess of expense in that area for specifically Tucker Park. I then wanted to jump to expenses and some of the assumptions made there. Um, consistent with the five-year local option levy, the third position is added in 22-23. Um, wages were trended at 3%. Um, some contracts, those that are listed in particular 21-22, well, actually, almost all of them. We assume, though it's probably not necessarily the case, we would we assume those were fully expensed um, or as, as expensed as um, likely would be in the first year. It's entirely possible that those would continue for multiple years, um, but the expense wouldn't exceed what the planned appropriation was in 21-22. So for example, the $200,000 in this model was fully appropriated and expensed, assumed it was fully expensed in 21-22. In it's possible that it would take a couple of years to do that. And so maybe the first year it's um, $150,000 and maybe the second year it's $50,000 or something to that nature. But um, the point is, is those are fully expensed and they're not continued within the model. So once they're expensed, they're gone. Um, and, and they're sizable amounts of money. And so it actually uh, reflects well in terms of the way the model works moving forward in um, forecasting a, a more accurate cash position. I will talk a little bit about um, capital. Capital is a little bit of a wild card. Um, as I mentioned, we have a really, um, we, we have a, a capital plan that's included in the budget. It's kind of a work in progress. Uh, we continue to do better at our capital planning and we'll continue to do so. Um, this model doesn't necessarily tie those expenses in um, because I believe there would be alternate funding sources for some of that. Um, but also because it, it just wouldn't be necessarily reasonable uh, to do that, um, particularly if you were looking at something like a, a new courthouse, which is on off in the year five at, I, I don't even remember off the top of it, many millions of dollars. You wouldn't just put that in the budget without a revenue source associated with it. Um, you know, you'll probably make an assumption there would be financing and there would be a bond and you'd show an offsetting revenue at the year you expensed it. So we could do that with some of the capital, but it, for purposes of modeling, we just didn't include some of those things. But, but there was an amount, and it was increased in terms of capital outlay. It's entirely possible 
that that would not be expensed as you move through time. And the range was $250,000 to $300,000 a year um, after the first year. So in the first year, it's a pretty um, small amount of money, but after that, it gets quite large, um, and it's just a pool to draw from as you move through time. And then lastly, and consistent with what's been done, um, I shouldn't say past years, because last year was the first year that we've done it, the equipment replacement program is now in place and uh, that is fully funded and those expenditures are reflected in here over the five years. There's actually a model in and of itself and those are calculated and the actual numbers uh, based on current vehicles being replaced are incorporated into this projection. So with that, I'm not going to spend a bunch of time going through all these numbers. I'm just going to focus on the bottom line because I think um, that's what people are most interested in, and certainly people can ask questions about anything that they want to. So as it relates to sustainability, I think what, what we're trying to do is to show that our ability to sustain services over time is maintained, and the window is five years. Um, and we're looking for numbers in terms of uh, contingency and reserve uh, that are at, um, or I shouldn't say at, within the range identified uh, by the Budget Committee moving forward. So in year one, um, which is 21-22, in the proposed budget, you can see and I'm circling this, you can see what I focus on is the 13.37%, um, which is within what I would say an acceptable range. Now when I say acceptable range, anything up to 15% is acceptable, and if it gets greater than 15%, um, I think that's the point in time when there probably needs to be a discussion about lowering the amount of the local option levy. Um, Clearly, the county is not at that particular point. However, I would say this is a great position to be, um, and it represents financial stability and health, and it's a place that you would hope you would be, you would have a number similar similar to that as you move through time. So let me um, kind of go to the next year. And these are actually year by year. So here's the second year. And what you can see in this particular instance is the number actually increases. And so you're looking at 14.51%. Uh, uh, and that's, again, that's a, a great place to be. Now, if, if you look at it, um, the numbers seem a little bit askew because the dollar amount is actually less, but the percentage is higher. And that goes back to the way the ARPA funds were treated within 21-22. If we were to spread those out over time, um, the percentages and the numbers would, would be adjusted. So that's why uh, the, the numbers look the way that they do. So you can see the 14.51 percent. As you go to year three, it actually uh, is reduced about three quarters of a percent or so, and it goes down to 13.73. You go to the fourth year, and it's 12.2. And when you go to the fifth year, it's 10.26. So what the model shows uh, at this particular point in time is that, you know, you do have a declining cash position. Having said that, um, as I look at this and I look at the 21-22 proposed budget, I don't have concerns about the level of spending in 21-22. And the reason why is because we've been incredibly conservative as it relates to the revenue side of the model, 
and we have control over the expense side as we move through time. Um, so I believe that the proposed budget is viable from a sustainability standpoint, but as I mentioned, I think it's going to be really important that you pay close attention to your expense levels as you move through time and you keep doing these forecasts to ensure that um, you're within your designated range as you move through time. Uh, let's see if there's anything else that I wanted to say. I don't think so. Um, I appreciate your patience as I work through all of that information, and I am happy to answer any questions that anyone may have as best I can, and if we can't answer them today, we'll endeavor to get answers for a future meeting. Thank you. Thank you, Jeff. Anybody? Questions, comments? Re real quick. Um, so, so Jeff, um, am, I, am I following in that um, when, you, when we say sustainable, um, sustainable budgets were, we're um, talking about a five-year period based on um, um, the levy that we were lucky enough to get? Um, that, is, that is the assumption that was made within the forecasting model. Okay, so, so, we, so basically, I mean, in a nutshell, we would have stability at current service levels um, uh, and, and we would be properly we're funding equipment replacement and looking at capital outlay and that sort of thing. But at year five, we would have a new the reality. Model, I, sh I should have mentioned this. The model assumes that the local option levy would continue. Okay. Any other questions, comments? And, and I would also say um, at the current rate, Arthur? Uh, yeah, um, Jeff, I'm having a little trouble uh, tracking in the budget document, uh, the levy itself. Uh, is it simply built into the property tax number or is there some way of tracking the levy on the revenue side? And then um, on the expense side, uh, do we in any way color the money so that we understand what is being supported by the levy and what is, uh, yeah, I, I, I know that that's a policy question, but I, I just want to hear your, your comments on, on how we uh, look at the expense side of that. Sure. So within the budget this year, and it was the same for last year, is the five-year local option levy shows up on the revenue side. Within the five-year local option levy account that is within the sheriff's budget, and so you'll see a property tax number there, and then you'll see a property tax number. Is it in budget and finance or non-departmental? A uh, budget. You'll see a property tax number for the permanent rate levy in uh, the budget and finance department. And so there's actually the two number numbers. Number? Uh, yeah, yeah, so the, the um, public safety levy is on page 111. And then the property tax, hang on a minute. Bear with me. No, I just, I just caught up with the first one. Don't rush. Okay. All right. So the property tax is on page 49. Okay. So the five-year local option levy was deliberately appropriated in the, um, the Sheriff's Department budget to show uh, that that money was be being used for public safety. And if you look at the appropriation level within that uh, cost center, it exceeds the amount of the public safety levy. Um, but I, the point is it clearly reflects that that money is being used for the purpose for which uh, the voters approved it. And it's allocated there and it's expensed there. Great, that I, answers my question, thank you. Any other questions, comments? 
Um, yeah, I've got a Mike, similar question. Oh. Uh, Mike Fox. Yeah, thanks. Um, in your model, which I think is a, a great idea, how did you take into consideration the uh, the COVID uh, extra funds we're, we're getting this past year and what you anticipate this year and it falling off after that? Did you put that into the model? Uh, so let me, uh, this may be more information that you, than you want, but I'm going to talk about it anyway. So the county received um, what we refer to as CARES money, and our last drawdown of CARES money will occur in June uh, before the end of the fiscal year. And the, the reimbursement for expenses uh, will be complete, and that is actually reflected in the cash position at year end. We assumed that we would draw all that money down. We have the expenses ready to be reimbursed, um, I believe, and, and we will be reimbursed for that. We will effectively spend all of it. Um, in fact, we may have a little bit more expense than we actually have revenue, which is a better place to be than the other place. Um, so that's reflected in the fund balance for the CARES money um, that went until June 30. The second, actually, you know, this, this gets really complicated, which um, kind of reflects my opening remarks about unanticipated revenues and expenditures. There's a significant funding stream dedicated solely to public health outside of these bigger pots of money, and they're smaller individual pots of money that come directly from other, um, uh, from other governments, most specifically the Oregon Health Authority, that are directly funneled into special revenue funds. Um, and, you know, those I'm not going to address. I'm just going to address um, the bigger pots of money. Having said that, it does add in a positive way to the cash position of the fund um, for the current fiscal year. For the proposed fiscal year, as I mentioned, you can see some cost shifting as we move costs to the special revenue funds as we expect to receive, um, based on what we've been told, additional revenue for pandemic response in excess of what the county is receiving from ARPA. And so that money is being redirected to the special revenue funds, and so are the expenses. Now, back to the, the ARPA money, um, I'll go through that again. Within the model and within the budget, we saw half, we will see half of the money before the end of the fiscal year. So it's reflected in the cash position of the fund, the year-end fund balance. And the other half will come in 12 months. Um, so it will be in the cash position of the fund or reflected as a revenue line in 21-22. It's fully expensed in 21-22. So half of it is going to show up in the fund balance, half of it is in a revenue line, and 100% of it is expensed on the uh, expense side in professional development, I think, didn't we? Contracts, oh, professional me. services. Not yep. professional contracts. Wow, that'd be an awful lot of training, wouldn't it? <laughs> um, it's expensed in contract services. Again, that's just a placeholder um, in the 21-22 budget. And it, within the model, um, that revenue and that expense is treated the same way. It's one and done. It doesn't affect the model after year one. It's a complete wash, almost a complete wash in year uh, year one. Thank, <clears throat> thank you for that. Mike. Yeah, th thanks. Thanks for that, um, Jeff. Question for you on your model. You've got one revenue model. Would it be helpful to have two bound one at more up the top and one that uh, is very conservative? And I think the model you've got is relatively conservative. Would I, it I would say that it is. I'm sorry. I would say that you're correct. It is it is conservative. I wouldn't say relatively conservative. It's it's conservative. And and that's there's nothing wrong with that. But I think uh, would it be helpful to the commissioners to have the the base curve is your conservative one, and and here's some assumptions and here's what it could be, with maybe a fifty percent confidence factor, so you know kind of an area between the curve. Just an idea for you to think about. 
I, I would just say that you know the numbers can be, manipula be manipulated any way that um, the budget committee would like to see them. It, it just takes some some time and some work to do that. But we certainly have the the model in place now. Um, you know, I would I would tell you that this model, like I said, was just done a uh, week before last. It was um, reviewed um, last week, uh, Monday and Tuesday. Um, there really needs to be some additional eyes on it. I feel fairly confident with it, but it's always best to have multiple sets of eyes on the details. So I need to have people in finance review it as well. But but I feel it it was good enough to show the, the budget committee today. Because I think it's important in terms of how you view the budget. But again, we can, uh, we can manipulate the expense side and the revenue side in any way that anybody wants. I, would, I was just gonna mention, I don't think manipulating is maybe the right word. It is projecting, <laughs> if this happens, here's what's likely to happen. So it, I can see you needing to update that twice a year as you know more about what's coming down the line to give the commissioners a heads up. Here's what's happening. Best guess of what's happening on your uh, revenue side. That's all. Thank you. Arthur. So these are uh, uh, specific details, but I'm, I just had trouble following this when I was reviewing this earlier. Uh, number one is the use of the transit room tax. Um, uh, can you remind me, uh, did the, what was the direction of the Board of Commissioners on, uh, I know it used to go to Chamber of Commerce, so it looks like it's not going there. Is it being used for the campground projects or what's going on there? Um, yes, um, I don't, okay. there's an interfund loan that's in place to pay for the um, sewer system at Tollbridge Park. Uh, Tina would have to remind me when that is paid off. It, it may be relatively soon. It, it may even be in 21, 22. It could be this year. I don't actually remember. But but it, that's where the money has been going. It's been paying off the um, the interfund loan for the sewer system in, in Tollbridge. And I would okay. say it's up to uh, the Board of Commissioners how those, and uh, for that matter, the Budget Committee has a recommendation, a recommendation as well. It certain is discretionary um, to a point how that money is used. For purposes of the forecast, because we know we have capital projects that are eligible within the parks uh, for that money, we've assumed that that money would continue to be used for that purpose. It doesn't okay. have to be. Could be other grant funds that are used, but that's what we assumed. Great, that, that, that totally makes sense. And uh, another uh, similar item is uh, I see in forestry, uh, there's $40,000 in revenue assumed for the parking system. I thought the parking system wasn't going to go into place this fiscal year. Did I mishear that? Um, it should be in place for next fiscal year. So in the proposed budget, um, we, we anticipate it will be in place. So by uh, by July 1st or sometime this summer, you think it's going to be in place? Um, it I, might I be later than that, that, but we expect it to be in place um, in in the proposed year fiscal year budget. Okay, I, I misheard that. I thought that you decided to postpone it a year to do some further development. Uh, the rec the recommendation. Um, and Doug can talk about this um, if need be. My recollection is the recommendation from the Trail Advisory Committee uh, was to move forward and get it in place. And so there's a, a request to get the ordinance drafted in with County Council um, to bring that in front of the Board of Commissioners uh, so that it can be uh, taken to hearing and. Um, either be approved or changed and approved. Okay, and my final detail is uh, you you developed this budget using the goals that uh, were developed in the five-year planning process. Uh, did the Board of Commissioners actually formally adopt those goals? I, I don't recall, um, I don't recall the process. No, that has not been done those. yet. Okay, so yeah, I'm not, I, I obviously I have no problems with them. I just uh, want to see where they were in the in the in the process. Thank you. Any other questions? 
for Jeff or staff. Mike? Yeah, thank you, Ron, and, and uh, thank you, Jeff and Tina. I thought this was a, a very, very informative uh, presentation today, and, and I, I'm really pleased with what I'm seeing so far. Uh, just a couple comments. Uh, you were talking, Jeff, about the uh, timber prices and where you think they're going to go in the next few years and probably stay up for another year or two and maybe level out, off or go down. Uh, I totally agree with that. I mean, this is an anomaly to what's going on right now and probably will change, but uh, the way we're using our funds from the forest receipts and, and balancing out over the 10 year rolling thing, and I'm not worried about it. It's pretty positive anyway, however it turns out. Uh, the other thing I wanted to ask uh, some of the other members on this uh, committee who have been on in the budget process a lot longer than I have, have you ever seen a budget like this? No, sir. Thank you. Any other questions or comments from the members? Jeff, I want to thank you for doing a, and your staff for doing a yeoman's job here. A great presentation. Um, it, it brings a whole lot of knowledge to me and I think to all of us. If there are, aren't any more questions or discussion, uh, Ron. Yes, I'm sorry. I, I had one one more comment. If I if I could sort of make a general comment instead of asking a question, I'm gonna, I'm gonna start limiting you to six comments. <laughs> I, I know. I know. This is, this is budget. This is this is my thing, though. So so, so give me a little flack here. Uh, I am. Um, <laughs> I appreciate it. Uh, I guess so. I want to make an overall comment. I, I'm very impressed by the the work that's been done, the document that's before us. I think it's it's really great. Um, uh, you know, there's, certainly there are tons of questions I have in detail, but I'll, I'll, I'll be working through through those. Uh, but I guess the 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 I think the challenge that's going to be facing us for the next couple of years, I know Jeff completely is aware of this, uh, is that uh, the water is muddied by so much in that we have on top of this operating levy, which we inserted into the system, we have CARES money, and then we have ARPA funds, and then the, the federal uh, lands funds. Uh, and so trying to tease out of this very muddy water, uh, how sustainable we are long term is going to be incredibly difficult. And I, I'm not begrudging the fact that we have this infusion of extra funds. I mean, this is, uh, it's wonderful that, that 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 we have the ability to to stay afloat through these trying times, but at the same time, the the accounting problem of tracking this and following this is going to be especially difficult for the board of commissioners and for the budget committee. And uh, uh, most of my questions, which I have moving forward, are questions of not of this year's budget, but on how we can color and mark what we're doing. So we have some idea from a policy point of view of, of where the various, what's being funded by what, uh, how you actually draw the line between the, the, the revenue that comes in, the expense that goes out. Uh, and that's just going to be really hard for us to do. Uh, you know, we all know that, you know, well, you know, Jeff, Jeff said, hey, on page 111, the, uh, uh, the operating levy comes in, it's all in the sheriff's department. So there it is. Well, we know that that shift uh, available general fund dollars to other places. So being able to track and understand this is going to be really hard. Uh, and I'm hoping that as a group, we can come up with some, uh, uh, some directives for staff or some, some ideas for staff as to how we can do this best so that uh, we don't come to the point that four years down the road, we, we're one year away from the levy expiring uh, ARPA funds dry up in what uh, December 2024, and then we suddenly the the dust you know the the, the uh, well, not to mix my metaphors the, the the mud clears in the water and we see a shark right in front of us. So uh, yeah, th that's my metaphor, and I, I'll, I'll stop talking there. Thank you. Any further comments? Uh, Mr. Chair, I was just going to say you, you threw out um, you threw out a maximum of six comments per meeting and. <laughs> I'm sure there will be some seeding of, uh, of comments if uh, if you actually hold hold us to it. So, 
I also, I also saw um, one small typo on page, and it's no big deal, but uh, just in case anybody else knows, on 15 of the uh, general fund expenditures, and by the way, Arthur got his pie charts, um, which I know he likes, uh, the health um, is just missing a decimal point, it says 35%, or it's so small that I can't read it, but it, I think that's three and a half. Thank you. Any so other I, did it, I did at least read the page 15. So <laughs> All right. And I know Is you guys a, oh. haven't gotten it, but uh, I did provide a searchable copy of this file to Tina. And so hopefully she'll be able to put it up on the website so you guys can do the control Fs and search through it instead of having to scroll through page by page. Good for you, Arthur. All right. Let's move on. Um, item five is a discussion on proposed 2021-22 budget. So at this point, I don't know what the pleasure of the budget committee is moving forward. Um, kind of in different years, there've been different processes. I think from staff's perspective, uh, we're happy to accommodate any process that the budget committee may want to undertake. Um, you know, I'm going to guess there may be questions that people have. Do you want to go through the budget fund by fund, or how do you want to how do you want to vet uh, the proposed budget? I guess is my question. So that's, that's why I say discussion on proposed budget. But my my question is as much about process as it is about substance. So whatever the committee uh, would like to do, um, staff will assist. Now's your opportunity. No comments. I'll, I'll, I'll throw my. Uh, I'll, I'll throw my. Uh, there, but seems like in the past we have submitted questions and given staff time to adequately research and answer that. I think that's probably a more efficient way to um, move forward than just. A million, you know, a thousand questions uh, in our limited time um, in these meetings. So I would propose that we do that um, in regards to you know any particular question about um, the funds. Well, I have to say it's amazing how it's really fun watching Tina find these things so quickly. It's amazing how quickly she can find any any answer to any of your questions. But I, I do agree with you. When you have to manually enter in all the numbers and manually calculate all everything, you get a feeling for where everything is all the time. <laughs> That's amazing. Sorry, I, I'm good with numbers, but I can't do that. So do we have a do we have a consensus then to submit your questions to the staff? And so I would um, go ahead. I would go ask ahead. that you direct those to uh, Tina, and Tina will share those with me. Um, so if, if that's uh, the pleasure of the budget committee, that's great. Uh, there's a meeting scheduled for um, the 13th, and we, uh, we're in the final stages of uh, preparing the information consistent with the Board of Commissioners' compensation for elected officials' resolution for the budget committee to consider at the meeting on the 13th. Um, I reviewed that work this morning and there's some changes that will need to be made. Um, and so we'll get that out to the budget committee as soon as possible. And there is a little bit of a hiccup if a meeting is needed on the 20th, uh, we'll need to reschedule that to a different day. We have a, a conflict um, with use of the room and more importantly, the electronic equipment contained therein or herein. Um, so we'll need to reschedule the meeting on the 20th. We can do that today, or we can wait until the 13th to see if it's needed, whatever the pleasure of the budget committee is. What's our deadline for getting questions in for Tina? It'll be the 12th. I will defer to Tina. Let me check the calendar. I prefer not the 12th. Um... <laughs> <laughs> so 13th then, okay, 13th by 9 a.m. Yeah. <laughs> um, let's see here. 
I would say if you could have them to me at the very latest by the 11th, I can get a decent response in time for the meeting. Does that sound okay. fair? Sure. Very much. Sure. I, w I would uh, just qualify that if she gets like 300 questions, <laughs> uh, you know, she'll, she, she and I will do the best that we can to answer those. But I, if we get a huge volume of questions, I, I will get through as many of them as we can, and uh, we'll need additional time to answer those. And uh, that will, we can do that at another meeting. Could could you restate the the due date? Then I, I lost you guys. Uh, yes, sir. So if you could have your questions to me at the very latest by the eleventh. Earlier really would I be could. better. Earlier would, would be better, and and to kind of back up what Jeff was saying, you know, if if maybe we could focus on your mo your most um, important questions, I guess, and see how I can get through those, and then if there's time, you know, if if there's a, a next level that's of importance to you, then I could you know, hit those next, you know, I just don't know how many questions I'm going to get and how long it will take to research it. So maybe if we, you could um, submit those to me uh, in a level of importance that would help guide me. Very good. Any other comments? Ron, I have a question. Sure. I don't know if this is something I should be submitting. I'm trying to kind of understanding what what we're supposed to be submitting to Tina. Um, but a year ago, we were here making some significant reductions and we had what we were referring to at the time, I think the wish list. We had um, three different columns, three different scenarios, and we made decisions that made a number of eliminations or requests from departments that did not get funded some of the things come to mind, like there was a truck for environmental health, there were lawnmowers, there were part-time positions, there was the energy coordinator contribution, things like that that we did not fund or we reduced the amount of funding for those things on that spreadsheet last year. Is there a way that we can take a look at that from last year and see what has been built into this budget? I did find the truck for environmental health in the book um, it's not listed on the capital spreadsheet at the beginning. It's kind of buried into the department part. So I'm not sure if I could say that we've um, funded a lot of the things that we've made cuts to a year ago today or a year ago during this process. Jeff, you wanna comment on that? Sure. So when the local option levy was approved by the voters last year, everything that was identified as a reduction was reinstated back into the budget. Um, and for purposes of moving forward, uh, and I'm not going to say, because uh, I, I don't remember the exact list, but I'll use the, um, the Energy Council contribution as an example. That was reinstated, and that is continued on in, in the proposed budget. Um, that's our contribution to keep the Energy Council going, and the county made a commitment to that group, assuming funds were available, and they are, to continue supporting it. So that is in there. Things like that would be continued for funding. Um, as it relates to vehicle replacement, um, all vehicles last year that were due to be replaced have been replaced, and anything that's on the replacement schedule in any given year is assessed to determine whether it can be used for an additional amount of time or it needs to be replaced. And if it needs to be replaced, the money is already there to replace it. It's already there. It, it, there isn't a capital expense anymore out of the general fund. There's a pot of money in fund 315, I think it is 315? Yeah, I think so, yeah, yeah. Um, right. Where if you look, there are transfers out of the general fund now there's a small increment of funding for each vehicle that needs to be replaced. It goes into that, and when a vehicle is scheduled to be replaced, 
and it needs to be replaced, it's replaced out of that fund. It's not replaced out of the general fund anymore. The exception, it's not an exception. The way the system works is if you look in the sheriff's proposed budget for 21-22, you'll see, I, I want to say $68,400. That is not a replacement, that is a new vehicle. So when there's a new piece of equipment, it has to be capitalized, it shows up as a capital expense. Once it's capitalized and shown as an expense in that way, then it goes into the replacement program, it's listed and an annual contribution is made towards replacement of it at the end of its useful life. Um, all of that stuff is continued on now and is funded in that way. So you'll see a, a series of contributions in each of the departments in the general fund, um, they, they show up as transfers uh, where they go into the fund for vehicle replacement. So the mowers, the trucks, the cars, um, they're all on a replacement schedule. They're all reviewed every year to determine what should or shouldn't be replaced. And so I don't know if that helps this, at all. Was this proposed budget kind of a bit of a catch up year or did the sheriff really have five vehicles that reach their maximum length of life on this very year where public work is staggered three years out for the different vehicles that they have listed. Hey, Karen, what page uh, do you want? Uh, 18. Thank you. So the answer of your question is yes. So what you'll see probably in the first, well, starting last year, um, the first, I actually don't off the top of my head, it may be for like the first three or four years, um, there is some catch up that needs to be done because we've not replaced vehicles on the schedule that they should have been. Um, and so once they get caught up, then, then the numbers in terms of the annual contributions start to go down. Um, uh, unless there's some, some really weird anomaly, which I, I've never quite seen before, but you know, anything's possible as I've learned in the last few years. Um, but you're correct. That is correct. There is okay. some catch up here. So the numbers are a little bit larger on the front end. Okay. So in trying to understand why the environmental health vehicle is not listed on this capital improvement project spreadsheet, why is it back into the environmental health budget as a vehicle purchase and not listed on this? Is there a reason? Are there differences? What, what page are you on? Oh, let me see. I don't think there was an environmental health vehicle this year. Um, yeah. no. Okay, it's on 73 capital outlay vehicles for 2021 was 30,000. That was in the current fiscal year. So did they get their truck this year? I remember we had this huge conversation yes. about the truck. It was like 250,000 miles and 20 yeah. years old. I believe that that vehicle is, I don't know if they have taken delivery on it yet, but um, I believe it, it has been replaced. We can double, I would feel more comfortable if we double checked and, um, and answered your question. It's just kind of things like that that we really wrangled with last year trying to do without. And then now we have opportunity to do some catch up on some of those capital investments. I wanna make sure that we caught some of those things that we sliced out last year. Yeah. The Everything that was on the list to be reduced was added back in last year. Yeah. Okay. Great, great question, Karen. Karen I have a follow-up really to... quick on that. Um, on the same capital improvement project sheet, um, there's a column that says funding secured. And does that, in that most of them say no? I, I guess I just want a clarification on what, what that means. It's not secured until it's appropriated. Okay, but those so but those are all factored in to the uh, replacement plan, and those will be funded through the uh, capital reserve when they're for, for equipment. That would be true. Yes. Okay, <clears throat> but the, uh, the the non equipment capital projects were were not included in that plan. Plan is that correct? We we don't have um, we don't yet have what I will call a, a replacement schedule for buildings, no. We um, were, 
as, as I mentioned, the, the facility piece of this continues to be a work in progress. We did better than we did the year before, but I'm not quite sure we're where we need to be. We need to continue to work on that. Um, and there is funding um, within the budget for for those things that are identified for this year, and there is funding in um, for year 22-23 for, um, I'm thinking in particular, one large expenditure, which it's possible we'll get a grant for that. Can we put this on the agenda in some way so that uh, you could walk us through the capital and facilities uh, replacements, equipment and, repl and, and facilities replacements? Because it, it so really is hard to understand how you did this. Uh, I, I'm not questioning anything. I just want to understand it. Yeah, the, the equipment replacement stuff, um, we certainly can very easily go through that. The, the facility stuff, there's not a lot of, um, I don't, I'm not sure to quite the correct way to put this. Um, it's a work in progress. We're not where we need to be as it relates to facility improvements and planning just yet. So that will right. appear um, a, a bit less thoughtful than perhaps, well, it will than the equipment replacement, which is on a schedule. We know when it needs to be replaced, um, and we have all those things identified. We don't necessarily have all of that with facilities. We did better than we did the year before, uh, but I don't believe we're where we need to be yet. Yeah, but we, we need to understand where we are. So if you can go through that, uh, you know, uh, no problem if you expose to us that, that hey, this is kind of, uh, this is fluffy, this is fuzzy, whatever phrase you want to use. Uh, sure. But we, we need to appreciate and understand where we are so we know what has to be worked on for next year and we can, we can track it. Uh, uh, I'm wondering about the ARPA allocation process. Um, I don't know if anyone thought this through. You know, we started a discussion at the Board of Commissioners. Are we going to be involving the Budget Committee in this process? Or are you imagining that all we're doing budgetarily is uh, recognizing the revenue and appropriating it in one bulk item and then uh, considerably later working on this? And l let me give you an example of why it might be, uh, uh, you know, the sort of thing that might be worth discussion, discussing. Uh, you have a $200,000 uh, expense on the Parkdale uh, unincorporated area. Uh, this is something we talked about as a very possible uh, use of ARPA funding. Uh, if that happens, then suddenly you have $200,000 of one-time uh, fund available, uh, and it might be interesting to see the uh, budget committee's thoughts on, on that. So I, I can see a lot of the ARPA allocations discussion might be worth at least having some discussion in front of the budget committee before we sort of delay it and then work on it a little bit down the road. Any further comments? I'll, I'll follow on with Arthur's com eighth comment there. Um, oh, thank you. Thank you for keeping tabs. Yeah. Um, and it, you know, from being in the, in the position that I am now, uh, not on the council and uh, having dealt with these budget uh, committees. Um, it seems to me that the way that ARPA money is spent um, is a policy decision that the council should make, whereas the budget committee is not necessarily the policy making body. It is the, the second set of eyes looking into the budget process to make sure that the public is, is uh, involved and aware of, of how the money's being spent and that it makes sense to us. Um, but as far as, as those decisions about that, that money, it would seem to me that would be a council issue. Thanks, Rich, that's a uh, good, good thought. Any other comments while we're Beating this one around. So, uh, Jeff, you're going to you're getting all this info and uh, going to be able to provide that at, at the 13th meeting. Yeah, when we get the questions, uh, we'll respond to those and we'll have the elected officials compensation. And I, um, I understand that uh, 
the committee would like to have further conversation or is it a commissioner item as it relates to um, facility and equipment, those schedules? I, I'm not sure where that discussion occurs. I'm fine with it either way. I, Anybody's thoughts? It seems to me like that's clearly within the budget committee sort of thing. It's, it's, it's a process discussion. It's an appreciation of where our financial systems are, uh, you know, how, how good our forecasting or our predictability or our predictive capacities are at this moment. And I would really hope that the entire budget committee would understand that. I concur. Great. So then maybe we put that on uh, the next agenda as well. Yes, I think that's appropriate. Any other thoughts, team? Been a good meeting. Uh, Heidi, I need to ask you the question about this um, third meeting. Um, can we wait till we, we are done with the May 13th meeting to schedule that? Uh, yes, you can. Uh, it's not a it's not a problem for you or no just um i would say just as long as you don't set the next meeting for uh may 14th um, we should be <laughs> fine okay thank you for your input you're welcome can i make one Any more comment com mr chair yes Ed. i was just gonna say i know you've been out of the uh, uh the, the seat for a, a while and the start of the meeting was a little rocky, but you've uh, redeemed yourself quite well. So good job, Ron. <laughs> yeah, well, th thanks, Ed. Uh, <laughs> it's, been a, it's been a while, it's been a while. Um, so this has been a very, very good meeting. A lot of good input. I think staff appreciates this 100%. And um, I would also say we appreciate staff 100%. So, if there are no more comments uh, about this, this day and this meeting, I will adjourn this meeting. Hearing none. Ron, is this your first Zoom meeting? Is it the first Zoom meeting you've chaired? Uh, yes. Good work. Oh, thanks. No, it's you guys. You guys, you guys are identifying yourself. You're and clear. by the way, Yate is Zoom. Yeah, yeah. <laughs> it, it,